No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Today I'm with my guy, Jeremy Rogers. How you doing, fam? Yeah, Jeremy Rogers. Better than ever. I always wanted to have you on here. I can't believe it's we finally happening. Let's hear this. I mean, you can wear them if you want. I like it. I like the rumbling in my ears from my own voice. It's sort of this like self-obsessed okay. thing I have going. <laughs> cool. So you hit me like up today. Yeah, but, I mean, we could talk all about your career, all about all the shit that you've done in your career, of which I know about a lot. That's pretty cool. But let's talk about what's going on right now. You, you've, you've got a little beef popping off with one of the biggest names of skateboarding. Yeah, it's uh, more his. Um, he has ownership okay. than me. But so what's it all about, and why is it all coming to the surface right now? Well, um, I run into this problem a lot, and um, I find I rub uh, friction people with power. You know, usually uh, real big people, and then if not them, a lot of times they're people's people, um, like some of the biggest. Um, and I think it's an energy exchange thing. And with Nigel, it just built up, and these things just kept happening. And then I just decided to, like, say, transmute the energy to my benefit and just uh, kind of air it out and let it be whatever. So entertainment. where did the grievances start? Was he fucking with you when he was, like, first turned pro when he was, like, five years old? Was he, like, <laughs> messing with you back then, too? Or when no, did it start? No, there was, there was a time when he, like, snaked me and Paul at uh, Tampa Pro, and I'm like, come on, son, you got to, like, get in line. <laughs> really? But that's nothing. When he was super young? Yeah, dreads. Dreadhead. Grab that thing. Come right. here. Right. <laughs> Okay, so uh, when, but when did the animosity start? Uh, about a year ago. I only know that because I had wrote some letter uh, to Thrasher when I was going to air him out before because it just kept repeating, and I'm like not at a stage of violence or trying to take that course of action. Right. And um, it was like a year ago because I seen this letter d dated, and he like um, at a party at his house, which was a goddamn Project X party. It was like a, a thousand people, hundreds of girls, and he told me to stop talking to like, girls i'm creeping them out or something which <laughs> talking to women is one of my art forms that i do very well <laughs> do you think that you like offended any girl in particular or something no i think it was more like i think honestly it comes down to more like simple like if, if i let my phone go it falls every time like certain laws and things and i think that at this moment in time where he's at as a kid he's 23 i'm fucking 33 now i'm a grown man and uh he um feels maybe a little smaller when I'm in the room, you know, and there's certain things and I've like taken a certain path where I've stripped myself of certain belongings and material things, um, which I was willing to take that course. And some, maybe when you're young and you have a lot, it can, your head can question certain things, why you question yourself, why maybe someone else doesn't. So you think that when you're in the room, Naja feels a little bit of competition for like alpha male stat Just, status? Yeah, yeah. That to, yes, to put it that way, simply, yeah. Okay. Not like he knows his trophies or sit where they sit. You know what I mean? And I mean, it's interesting because he's kind of like you were kind of in the spot sort of that he's in right yeah. now of just being that super pro. Mm -hmm. Like you, you, you were in that phase. Do you feel like there's like, do you think he's sort of a, in a, a state of mind that you remember when you look at where he's at? Yeah, I was, uh, I was worse, actually, I would say, like, in some ways. Like, some ways I was, like, really kind and whatever. But I also used to, like, uh, carry guns at his age and be, like, professional and be retarded and, like, pull them out on the sunset. he carries a gun? No. 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 <laughs> probably got a guy with a gun with him yeah, sometimes, right? Yeah, he's got a guy with a gun. <laughs> Once in a while? <laughs> yeah. If I was him and I had all that money and all them tricks, I probably wouldn't want to yeah. carry a gun either. You do a tray flip, the shit falls out of your pocket, hits the ground, yeah. shoots you in the thigh. And then uh, if it's a revolver... And then, um, if he had a revolver, that would be great. He fast forwarding, so he, he this night at that party, he uh, he tried to like put his hand on me one point in time. He does this weird move, he grabs my shirt or whatever, mm. tries to pull it down, and I like bat it away. I'm not gonna fight you, Nigel. And I sat down by this fucking girl, and he went to kick me in the head, and he kicked this fucking bird in the head, and she was fucking crying. And he, that, ki he kicked a, uh, a girl in yeah. the head by accident, <laughs> yeah, by accident. It's his friend, nothing's gonna come of it. Sorry, he doesn't like that I air that out, but yes, that's true. He kicked this fucking bitch in the head by accident, by Go accident, on. trying to kick me in the head. So he's not no woman beater. I'm, okay. I would never put anything wrong on someone, but so has anything else happened between you and then guys between since then? then over the years? He just like, uh, just numerous occasions, he'd come up to me, try to do something in a club, and I just turn cheek policy. And then the other day at um, Liaison, he was like spending it was after x games and he was like he told them either he goes or i go and they're like i'm spending right now you know and they right. told me and i'm like i like them and i'm like you know fucking i'll be out you guys get your money kid wants to give you his money take it wow but he really didn't want you around to that yeah that like level, to that huh? level he couldn't i think just went a little there we go it was like he, he we couldn't be in the same room and i seen him when i was in there and i seen him like stiffen up you know he was like stiff 
and 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 right when he caught my presence, and then and then sure enough, when it came to get me, I already knew what it was going to be, you know, and that was a point when I was like made a decision, like, well, okay, like uh, there's no reason to be actual violent, but or whatever, but I'm not going to let this person constrict my range of motion, you know, right where I have right to be. Well, you're kind of a consistent presence in the Hollywood club scene. Yeah, go out a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you've been uh, you've been on it for a long time. A lot of people in skateboarding got that story about how like they used to be all about going out to the clubs and now they don't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Like Muska, you watch him on Epically Later, he's telling that story. You're mm -hmm. still in there. Yeah, I'm in the mix. You're definitely in the mix. So yeah, I need my freedom of motion. <laughs> and then I uh and then this is the end of that. But and then I um so I'm like, what the fuck? And then it just came to me, and I did this one little video, and it went up, and then I did another video saying, uh, fucking Niger challenge, and I gave him a fucking. 30 day fucking you accept in a few days and then 30 days we'll do a fucking uh myathlon and we'll call it niathlon if you win where we do a three part we do a fucking game of skate a battle of the wits which is like a roast which would be fun right not a rap battle no just okay. like a just like comedy like wits something some kind of battle of the wits the joneses yeah whatever where you're just sort of dissing each other yeah back yeah and something forth. something but something where it's it's mind oriented and right. then and then the third part to our triathlon is a fucking uh, a boxing match because right. he kept trying to fight me anyway so i figured I might as well have that so what do you think the odds are of him uh consenting to this arra well, arrangement he hasn't yet but now, now that we're putting fucking gas on the flame who knows right <laughs> But okay, so let's start with the fight thing. Like I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. He seems like he's in the gym. He seems oh, like yeah. he's on his, his peak physical condition. You, on the other hand, again, you're in the Hollywood club yeah. scene. Got a party cough. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that you're necessarily like you know in the gym or anything. You might be. You could tell me that. No, no, no. no. So f in terms of sheer physicality, I feel like he might have an advantage. How do you feel about that? Well, yeah, there's a there's like a, that, that's a layered onion. Um, yeah, one. Also, I think he's like just in a certain champion mind frame where he couldn't his uh, his pride would be bothered too much by the loss that he would just right. come back relentlessly, and I would be able to be like, uh, "That's enough," you know what I mean? I feel like he would he would find a way to win. He would go no matter what, but I'd be like, yeah, "I'm fine. I've seen enough." Okay. But also the game of skate, I see. I figure the way it would go is the game of skate for sure. Uh, that's why I have a little month. I'll you know practice a little bit before then, but I have a certain trick vocabulary that is uh different than his and i can beat him at the game escape battle of the wits he doesn't really do too much work up here you don't think he's smart uh, no he's definitely smart but he's uh, being witty and like sharp and present is a different art form and that's like being able to not like think about what you're going to say and be able to tune into people and energies and do that's, that that's the part of this whole thing i would like to see the most is the 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 roast battle just really? sort of on that's stage. Really? That's cool. You're the, you're the first. Yeah, because, you know, that's the kind of thing where you really just get to see what somebody's made of. Is, and, is yeah, their, they pour their, their fucking, skills. and pour their fucking how they feel out, you know? Yeah. And I would like to see, like, what his main grievances were with you. I feel like a podcast should be part of this. It should, the grievances should be done on air. I'm here. You're here. He might have, you know, a security guard just to make sure you don't pull out a shank or something. But then we could just sort of do a podcast. Of, uh, and then at the end of it, maybe we could even do an official vote. Find out who who, uh, when, who, when who won the battle of the wits. Yeah, because that's the second. That's our two of three right there. I think that would be dope. And then, I mean, shit, you might not even have to fucking do the fight. The I fight, think the you know? boxing the thing about the boxing thing is I think even with me saying this. He, he would be, if I win the skate and then won the wits, he would be so worked up and mad by the boxing match that his sheer anger and whatever would overtake his, uh, his ability to be calm and calculated. Uh, see, I feel like if he's smart, he's probably not going to want to take part in a, in a duel unless there's, like, proper forms and paperwork and stuff because, you know, he's got a lot of money in the bank. Like, it could be an obvious lawsuit thing. Well, we can, we do, can get some we paperwork. Can paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> we can headgear? No. Boxing gloves, at least, for sure. Okay. I don't know about headgear. Well, again, with the game of skate, though, I mean, he's one of the top guys out of there right now. Yeah, but now. flat ground is different, Adam. Flat ground is your fundamentals. Right. Flat ground is a totally different thing. But you don't and think I that he's pretty, pretty on top there. of that either? He's, he's very good, but, but there's still stuff I've done uh, 10 years ago that he can't do today. So you're going to bust out some stuff that like, he's probably never even heard of? Just like whatever. I switched tray flip uh, 12 stair 10 years ago. It's a certain complexity, a certain thing where he can do the trick, but whatever. That's I can... Do it, make it go 540 and 180 with it and do these other stuff that is, isn't really up his sleeve. Right. And if I chisel away that fucking iceberg for a month, I'll be prepared for this cocksucker. I'll be ready for that. I'd like to see you like, <laughs> just grinding it out. That's the first time I called him a name. I'm sorry. I don't oh, think cocksucker. you're a cocksucker. Yeah. I actually like you. Okay, see, that's an interesting <laughs> question, though. It's like, 
aside from the fact that he doesn't like you, do you dislike him? No, I approve of him. You know what I said about him uh, him winning all the contests? For anyone who doesn't know, he's this guy that pretty much wins all the contests in skateboarding. I told, like, Paul. I told um, Paul Rodriguez, this guy, um, Tori Pudwill, and Shane O'Neill, who are all other tops. I was like, you guys are you're putting energy into him on a level where it's like when he goes and shows up he just thinks i gotta um not have a bad day mm. and they're thinking i gotta beat Nija. and so it's all these people with you know you know powerful energy receptors and funnel and use a lot of their energy and they're they're pouring it into him unconsciously in those moments thinking i gotta beat Nija. and i tell them that and then i also tell Nija like you're our mayweather keep winning i've told him this shit like a year ago, I totally support him and, and wish the best for him. I just, he just kept bringing an energy to my doorstep that I just, in my brain, there was just, oh, that, well, I guess I can use that. You're going to keep giving it to me. What it's do you free think he doesn't like about you? Well, part of it is, uh, I guess I'm going to leave this other person I was going to mention out, but, um, but there's someone like him at a certain caliber from brands that I've been dealing with for a long time and he felt away for a little bit and I think it's part of it is the lifestyles that we live um, we live the same lifestyle you know we get to do stuff that like billionaires fucking do you know and and around babes a certain way that's like very abnormal and um, I think that how hard he has to work at this moment in time to maintain and to do that stuff something inside him it bothers him because he knows he sees me just fucking with my pretty much my feet up every day i'm just kind of go with the flow right now you know right and you uh, think he's challenged by that if it seems like he's sort of like out there just still grinding and like, well he is grinding but i think it maybe it, it bothers him that we can then at the end of the day we can do the same things and we live the same way and it's kind of like what and then also just to pure being a man and when you're not a man you know men but, can bother you but he's like probably making millions of dollars a year are he's you, definitely are, got liquid mills like are, he shouldn't are, yeah. be worried about me at all but are you saying that you you're making like a million dollars a year or like what, how made, are you living I the have. same lifestyle Oh, just when we go out, when we what we do at night with the lives, the things that we we both can you go end to up a Grammy in the same party, places. we both can go okay. to the same place, we both get to fucking you know do the same shit. And at this point, he lives the way I live. We don't have to really spend money to do that. It's just uh, you're 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 welcome to do that. You know. Right. Well, shit. Let 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 Jeremy Rogers party. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> I've been seeing Jeremy Rogers at the clubs for a long ass time. It's good. He has fun. Sometimes too much fun for some rooms. I got eighty sixes all over this town. Do you? Where? Yeah, all of L.A. Tau properties right now. All of SBE. What the fuck do you do? That's a lot of stuff. Yeah, just you know, same thing. Just you know, rubber rubber person. This guy Jason Strauss from Tau felt a way about me. Really? Yeah. And he just said, no, that guy's not allowed there anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's what's weird is because there's these conglomerates that own all the clubs. Yeah. So, like, if you're banned from one, you're banned no, from, like, cool. ten. I'm cool. I'm cool. And, uh, like, New York, I go there. I'm cool with his partners, and I go there. But here, yeah, it just, it just built up in his mind. And he was worried about me, like, opening weekend when he, again, shouldn't be. And, yeah, put a fucking cold 86, all L.A. Tau properties, so all five. I'm just... Jeremy had too much fun in those rooms to get him Damn. out. <laughs> Do you ever get sick of like going out and stuff, or, or is it just something you consistently just enjoy? Um, I, you go through waves. Uh, right now, I'm on a wave of working a lot, reading, and doing different things. But I, uh, I don't. Yeah, I have a blast every time. I go out, it's fucking babes. I meet people every time. Pff, uh, yeah, well, I'm happily single. You yeah. Know? Have you been single for a while? Yeah, for a minute. Yeah, I'm done with uh, the girlfriend experience. I'll maybe have a possibly i could have a wife and kids at some point which right. sounds fun but no more just a fighting with a human being you pulling in a shitload of pussy or you just sort of keeping it minimal what are you doing i keep i keep i hang out with a lot i i hang out with a lot more women than i sleep with at this point because i'm not at that stage where you're like needing to take down girls to feel away right you know, I, i'm uh, in tune with the fucking wondrous awe-inspiring creatures that they are and i'm just present with them and if we smash then you know it's <laughs> If we smash, then it's usually great. <laughs> then they might not be alive the next morning because it might be so powerful that it might just take them out no, of commission. It's good. It's good. I mean, I'm just not trying to force my hand running around trying to get fucking laid, you know? Right. Which so, kind of kind of creates a, a a paradox effect of putting more of it around you because you're not right pulling at it. You're and, cooler. And crushing if it. you're not trying to fuck, then all of a sudden you're a little bit more hospitable to hang around <laughs> yeah. for them, and then they sort of like are more down to hang out. Yeah. And then and then if you do fuck, you'll flee fuck like you should fuck. Yeah. yeah. On the roof of a car. Yeah. On or on a roof or whatever. Just any old roof. I like yeah. public places sometimes. Public places fire. That's definitely something I'm into. I did fucking Fourth uh, of July like over a balcony like and it's a fucking 
house looking over the ocean. There's people here. Chanel West Coast is there and everything. It's fucking, oh, <laughs> she's saying, what the hell? She would have been like, like, yo, bust a verse. I, yeah, she would. And, uh, Chanel West Coast, she's hard, hard she's, on she's, the mic. She's, 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 she's grown a lot. Bro, young money. She's, she's lit. <laughs> you remember when she was, uh, she, she got kicked out the club. You, you see that video? Um, I didn't know. I heard about it, though. Oh, my God. It was the funniest video ever. Yeah, and you I know what? she was tripping. The funniest part about it is that she has this black dude with her, and he's got these long pink dreads. And, like, somebody in the, in the audience or the crowd is just like, is that a little pump? Is that a little pump? And it doesn't look like a little pump at all. But she just flips out and she goes, it's not little pump. Little pump is it black. She's screaming at him. And I see oh my God. I, I seen pump in Miami and I, I mentioned something about that and he was like, wait, what are you talking about? I figured that he already knew about it because yeah. I thought about sending it to him when it happened but then I was like, he probably already had a million people send him yeah. this and he was just dying laughing at this, at this <laughs> dude being accused of being little pump. It little didn't pump look like isn't him at all. black. Little pump isn't black, and she called him little pump. That was the funniest <laughs> shit. It's like it's a very obvious lil. Like how have you been in the rap game for how long, Chanel West Coast, and you don't know that it's lil, not little. <laughs> Is she cool though? So that's your homegirl. I like her. Yeah, she's funny. She's you ever cool. hook up with her? Nah. Would you tell me if you did? Um, probably, but uh, I probably maybe I wouldn't, Chanel, because it's you and you're my friend, but. Pro- yeah. Probably I would. No, it's it's good to not expose her for that if you yeah. did. Yeah, but I didn't. Is there anybody famous you can tell me you have slept with? Uh, I don't know. If you I got would. like Beyonce on your list, you gotta just tell me. No. No. Um, okay. No, just fucking like you know, insta famous hoes. <laughs> That's pretty cool though. They're cool. <laughs> <laughs> They're cool. Hey, so this new music video though that you put out that you have that's coming that out on No Jumper, out probably yes. it's probably gonna come out the same time that, that, that nice. this comes out. What's the idea? You're doing a bunch of coke in the video. Let's talk about it. <laughs> um, we just, uh, it's, uh, we, uh, the record is really dope. We did it a while ago, actually, but it was just in line uh, to, to do something for first. This guy, Seven, produced it, who produced 10 bands for Drake and some big Rihanna record. I can't remember the name right now. Um, and other shit, a lot more. Um, but he produced it and then uh this guy i'm shooting with he just shoots really dope stuff and we've been creating and freestyling stuff it wasn't really that thought out fucking hey let's do this fucking part verse at you like eating a steak and then for some reason i thought should i get some blow and we know like and it just happened to be funny timing with this because some people are like oh you're on fucking he's on drugs or he's tripping or some shit like that which with this will come out pretty much then and look kind of funny like so that that is real blow in the video it's real blow yeah, I've had, yeah it's like what the fuck i mean like it'd probably be such a pain in the ass to go get to f- fake blow yeah my, in my if you do it might as well do it anyways you know yeah. what i mean but it is funny i never ate a goddamn steak and did blow before but <laughs> <laughs> yeah usually those are very different parts of the night <laughs> but it was kind of looking like it's so raw that you're like uh whatever you're just you're that savage you do blow all day you whatever and we kind of thought of it like actors do blow in movies all the time but like definitely skaters don't put shit out like drugs and and uh singers will sing about it we can all sing about it but you might not show them doing it but it's like whatever i don't give a fuck what anyone thinks we're rappers fucking, yeah we got it and not even that's just fucking so many bitches out here do blow some nights i fucking party and i'll do some blow with you you know yeah. like i know what my pyramid of is how far i'll go or won't and i'm how in far, fine health how would you describe your relationship with cocaine it doesn't exist if you have some blow, I'll do some blow with you if we're doing, you know, if that's what we're doing right you there. You don't think you have an unhealthy relationship no, with it? No, like, I don't buy fucking blow. I won't buy no blow. You just sort of go to the club and it's it's finds just, its it's way just to fucking you. like how blow finds babes. It's like, and then I'm out with babes doing blow. I'm fucking, shit, I'll do some blow with a goddamn dime. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Girls do love coke. That's a fact. <laughs> they do, dude. They really do. You could ask a fucking bitch in a ballroom gown dress out here and she'll be like, yeah, I'll have a bump. Yeah. You but, could look like fucking Danny DeVito and if you have some fucking coke, then <laughs> Girls are gonna kick it with you. It's like a you weird suck, but harsh reality. Yeah. Like if I lost everything right now, but I still have enough money to buy a couple grams a night, then you could still have a fucking mm-hmm. line of girls hanging out with you. Mm-hmm. It's just somehow it works like that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like having that shit around me. But uh, yeah, I don't. Even, I just it's you know. just it's around them, and I'm fucking a party with them, you know. Yeah. But that just we just thought it was just funny because we knew people trip, and it's it really to me it means nothing. Like I know who I am. Like fucking yes, I do, sometimes I do drugs and. So does everyone else, most of everyone else. I mean, to be fair, you do seem a little bit more laid back right now than perhaps other times that I've had like late night conversations with you over the past couple of years. Yeah, we're we're growing, evolving beings, right? Adam? <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Yo, but you know what's crazy too though is like, all right, so where exactly were you born? Boston, oh, like, uh, 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 Boston Medical Center, oh, Jamaica Plains. Wow. Okay. There. Yeah. You're, what's the best trick you ever did on the Jamaica Plains Royal? 
Uh, I don't know. Nothing really. I don't that know. thing's legendary. Yeah, though. yeah. And BMX is a super famous trail. Yeah, really. Because it's yeah. like good to go up. Mm-hmm. People do like five forties out of it and shit. Yeah, we don't go up. No, not yeah. that often. No, okay. somebody could grind up that. Yeah, it'd be a mighty rail Tori, to go up. Tori can grind up a fucking roller coaster. Yeah, that that would be a big one to go up. Yeah. But, okay, so uh, talk about like your upbringing and stuff. What was your childhood like? It was uh, it was fine, healthy. Um, uh, m- the parents uh, moved outside the city at some point. Um, mm-hmm. Spent most of the days in there skating. They got divorced when I was 11. Uh, I cried then, and then I remember just probably after first Christmas, it was like, hey, we have two Christmases. Mm. So that was a non-issue, you know. Yeah. That never bothered me. Um, so were you skating super young? Yeah, I started skating at 13, and then I was like catching a small check like 350 a month from some company who uh chapman this company chapman okay i'm actually doing a, a board independently with them right now but here or there is that the uh gangsters yeah, uh gangster thing yeah. gangster things i saw yeah. that on your website earlier yeah there's this uh in skateboarding sk- pros get two dollars a board and it's been that way forever and it's a 50 dollar product and there's a way to sell a board independently and actually eat you know and right it's totally different and uh that's something I'm trying to would like to revolutionize and make it accessible for other pros who are in between or off a brand can still eat off their product. You know, that's interesting. Yeah, because it's like in the skateboarding world, like BMX got fucked up a long time ago in the sense that all the companies started selling on their own websites and cutting out the mail orders of the really? shops okay. like a long time ago. Yeah, but you know, it's still sort of controversial or whatever. But and skateboarding has like much done a much better job of like holding true and to that, that model of people not selling direct. But mm-hmm. it's kind of interesting what you said because a lot of people are you know a popular skateboarder but then maybe not in the position to yep. have a board and they could sell it on their own and make what like 30 bucks a profit instead yeah, of that's correct yeah actually Your yeah that's good that's pretty that's right and 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 sometimes there's things with handling and shipping if you wanted to do free shipping it'd be a little less but yeah like uh virtually i've been explaining to him but i guess we're already airing it out and whatever so might as well uh let's say like whoever um shane o'neill before he quit um Skate Mental, this company, Skate Mental, that he was keeping the roof on. He was selling um, 3,000 boards a month, which from them, that's six grand, you know? Right. And I told him these number breakdowns, and he was like, wait, not possible, mate. You know, at first he thought it sounded a trip, and I broke it down to him exactly how it is. And it does, it could come out to that. He could be doing like 1,000, uh, uh, like 3,000 a month and do 1,000 of each graphic, like, and it's a limited whatever, and direct to consumer and see 30 bucks a board, and that's fucking 90 grand, right? Yeah. Well, it's for 3,000 boards? 3,000 times... 30 is 90 grand. 3,000 yeah. times 10 is 30, yeah, so 60, 90, yeah, 90 grand, you right. know? That's a fucking joke that a skateboarder could be making that much off his board, and even if he was not doing that, even doing half of that, fucking 50 grand... But see, then not, you're kind of doing everything on your own. It would be interesting, well, though, that, sorry. if somebody at, like, the top of their career yeah. actually, like, tried to do that. Like, I would be interested to see if Shane O'Neill actually said, fuck it, I'm going to do my own board he, yeah. and sell it on this online store, like, to see and how he, crazy it would and go. He, and he could. Well, Paul did it once. He did a gold board he did 500 and they sold in two minutes and he got that he took home that you know 20 racks or whatever yeah and then a couple other dudes have done it they just haven't put the system in place i would like to put the system in place so it's easier for a skater they can just come get a get a graphic get whatever we handle it and they don't you know they can still consciously think of a graphic but do it do it that way didn't didn't you have that uh brand wasn't selfish yeah i had a yeah what's going on with that just on ice right now okay like Things you just like brain babies and things and that one just we had a difference with the manufacturer so it's just so nice i'd like to bring it back at some point nice but this would be this is easy and for me it's just whatever i seen money like go into paypal instantaneously that i had just created and created boom and, like it was cool you know and it was cool to sell a product independently like what yeah it's like it was tight that's tight so what about uh I, I mean i want to talk about a little bit about like your time as a pro like at what age did you really start to like travel and be a real pro and like when did you decide to cut it off fucking i got blackout drunk in japan at 14 years old with chapman so uh started early and then in <laughs> i was like stumbling home like falling in bushes like you know i could have got cut up by the Yakazuwa. <laughs> oh my god that would be lit that would be an interesting story for you to tell yeah but not if i'm fucking chopped up in pieces so when you were 14 or so is when you felt like you actually like started to be a real pro I wasn't, you're not a real pro, but I'm a pro in the sense of taxpayer's eyes. I started making a buck. I started traveling for it, you know. Right. And by 15, I 
was uh, dropped dropped out of school, was doing homeschool, and didn't do that. But I moved out here at 15, you know, right. alone, and couch surfed it for the first couple of years with brands, and then, um, you know, I carried on a supreme career until 25 when I, you know, said it basically the same way that maybe like a kid um, goes from playing baseball to football right. you know with no thought of like social repercussions or concerns just okay i want to do this now and they want to do this more than this they do that you know how much were you making from all those brands at the peak of your career i was doing 66 uh k a month on paper sixty-six thousand. wow which, which how much from red bull uh red bull was uh like 12.5 okay and, and and it's like and it's a lot and then it's not a lot like if i was doing it now like i would be you know, doing investing and not just spending money and doing it would be so different. Right. Then it was just money's coming in. I just spend it every month like fucking idiot. And seven hundred grand a year. How, how long? Yeah. I did how long were you making years. that for? I did seven hundred four years in a row. And by the way, for you who doesn't know anything about taxes and the difference between the wealthy and the poor, they take a lot of that. I paid fifteen. No, I only paid fifteen grand on seven hundred. Why? Because you're uh, you are incorporated, so it's getting paid to a corporation, and then you you can write off everything. I spent the whole seven hundred, so I write everything off. Right. And you pay taxes on what's left. It's well, you're spending, you're, you're writing off like the bottles in the club and shit. Everything. Really? Is yeah. that just part of being a skater? Part. It's you know, you're hosting, entertainment, whatever. It's just yeah, chains, everything. You really felt like you spent all of it, like. Pre- yeah, I mean, yeah. some months I would, I, I, I literally borrowed fucking two grand from my mom before who worked at Applebee's as a goddamn bartender like one month after spending through my fucking money that month you know do you look back on that and regret it no I like learned so much but I was like operating like a poor person like you can be poor at higher levels you know just like poor person with a lot you know but a still poor person mentality spending what's coming in just living check to check you know, and after that and then like going through seven years of like uh, being broke which I just finished going through I, you know, I became a full man, one that bothers men in the room who <laughs> are their pride is placed in their wallet. Right. Do you um, do you feel like all the partying and stuff that you were doing did that that all start to take its toll on your actual skating, or did you manage to stay pretty like motivated? No, I I, w- I wasn't. That was never an issue when I was skating. You know okay. what I mean? Like it was until 25. You know, it was literally just like one day I was out like doing like a Plan B ad like jumping down some stairs and i was like fuck i'd rather be in the studio making a song right now you know right and that and just like i had some type of spiritual moment shortly after that and then either way i just okay it was as simple as that i arrogantly thought it would be a smoother transition but by grace of the universe and understanding having a cosmic intelligence exist beyond us i went through a lot harder path but it was you know right so did you from the very beginning were you sure that you couldn't be a pro skater and really pursue your rap dreams at the same time it was like it got to the point where i was like for me as a as an artist um one when i originally started it i was like i had a breakdown sermon at a church where i was crying and the next day I had a music bug and I was like, fucking, oh shit, this is gonna be a problem. Like, I don't do hobbies, you know? And I didn't really know what. And then like two years later is when I pulled that trigger prematurely. Um, but I, um, I, I thought to myself, okay, something about this, if I jump out this window now in fate, faith, it will align me with some higher fate, you know? Mm. And I did, and I just knew that much, that little like, whatever, say him in myself. And, uh, and I did, and it aligned me with some higher fate, which was going through certain, walking through struggle that made me a certain respectful person. I don't litter, lie, or kill insects now. And not even an insect. Not even an insect. I catch spiders and walk them out of the fucking studio, and they are like one of my childhood fears. You vegan? No, which is funny, but I couldn't kill the animal. Right. But I'm definitely, I'm, I'm inclined towards it, you know? Uh-huh. Um, so... How do you feel about how that transition went? Like when you're you started putting rap stuff out, it almost felt like it kind of became a meme sort of early on. Yeah, it was. Um, I couldn't can say it was tough. I was like surprised how harsh people were, but that was that was one of the most beneficial things. And say dealing with something like this thing with the Niger thing, it's because. He, 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 like, responded to my shit and wrote some long comment and whatever. I laughed at this at first, dog, but then, like, called, this is what you need to do for attention, this and that, and all mad and, and calling names and fucking whatever else he said. And I'm like, really, it was like, I just was like, you keep offering this to me, fine, I can use this to my benefit. If you keep giving me, like, dough, I'll make a fucking pizza out of it. Right. You know? And, um, 
it was uh, at the beginning when I first retired to do it, it was tons of people pouring this energy onto me. And I learned things about like, you know, you, you, if you, you love, love starts with self and then ends with everyone else. You don't um, speak, speak out doubts if you don't have them in yourself. You know, I won't talk about golf if I don't think about golf. So when people are telling me, oh, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that. I understood it was like stemming from fears and doubts in themselves. And mm. over time was able to, you know, back up and recalibrate and, and have a, even an empathy for that. Right. Now I, I laugh at comments and I, and I base them. Well, that's funny. And I base them. Perfect timing. <laughs> and I base them back with, uh, with truth. You know what I mean? Right. To hopefully rise up in them, like realize why they're fucking saying shit. You know. I feel like a lot of people in skate probably like didn't know what your stylistic influences were at the time that you came out. I felt like you were very influenced by Lil B and the whole based movement. No, I was just probably little. I was just probably a little based at the time. Yeah. And I started a certain way. I started. Um, I would do, I was inspired by like, say like Wayne and Jay-Z, their process. So I would, I would write the whole 16 bars in my head and then I would like record and not punch. And I had a certain strict rigid regimen. And over the years I've opened up and done things different ways. And now I like, you know, freestyle catch melodies, a lot of stuff comes out and just build like you're just painting naturally. But n nonetheless, that early process that I was rigid on slowed things down, probably like writing abilities and delivery, you know? But it built something better later, you know. What do you think is, like, the status of your rap career now in terms of, like, how, how you feel about where you're at? Um, I'm happy for the first time. Like, it's, uh, um, we have, we, we have liftoff, you know. Mm. We have a fucking foot in the pigeonhole, and I, and I see clear movements from here, how you can, you know, play chess and make the next moves and move forward, you know. And, I, and the, the quality of the music is different, you know, and I know what is out and it's the first time it's like detached and you're not emotionally we're like eat close to it you know it's just like okay this song's right this mm -hmm. one's whatever you know nice do you uh still use the jay casanova name no i um just my name right now but i have like a project done and i think what i'm gonna do is like because i also like don't love labels and boxes mm. is like this first one i'm gonna call uh mr scott like um uh, spelt out Mr. M-I-S-T-E-R and then my middle name is Scott and like I think each time I drop a project I'm thinking of like I have these different like maybe pseudos and things I'm drawn to like this guy Saint Germain you know maybe put out one under that you know mm -hmm. put out and it's just like you know your little autograph sign off on the thing there I don't know don't really care call me what you want just fucking different identities be, be, be and, but not even the identities just the music be fluid and be able to change and shift and you know right sort of adapt to your personality yeah, and I like growing and shifting music and also whatever. You know what I used to like is, like, I forget, you had some lyric about, like, how your magnums would always rip. Dude, that's fucking, I still hear that to this day. That's the first <laughs> song that came out. It was on, like, World Stars, a Soldier was Boy, 100, fucking 100,000 million yeah. remix. And some magnums what I fit. Magnums what I fit. Magnums. And, you, and they still rip. Often they still rip. Yeah, <laughs> that shit was tight. Like a thousand bitches, damn. Yeah. <laughs> still ain't got no kids, some shit. Isn't that crazy? You ever think that's you why. might be sterile? Oh. Uh, <laughs> You never got a girl pregnant? No. I mean, yeah, maybe. I, I've, 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 you know, you know, been on the uh, end of, uh, I don't even need to put that out there. But, yeah, maybe, maybe once. Yeah, I've, I've fucked so many girls raw. But I pull out. I, I never do, fucked up. I pull out, dude, yeah. I pull, I pull out, out religiously. Pull out on time, right, wipe the tip. There's an art. Wipe the tip. That's a fact. Before you put it in, sort of just drag your finger along yeah. the urethra, just, just make mean, sure there's no, no residue. Maybe that sounds painful, but you know, like, Not like here's a sheet or a shirt. Get in there. A shirt. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah. Use your Gucci shirt. It's better than having a fucking Gucci ass kid. That's a fact, man. Right, I mean, right now. Gucci kid. Yeah. Damn. No, oh, I mean, I see like people like rappers and shit who buy their kids matching Gucci outfits. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> like a little kid, like they just fucking fall and get dirt all over their shit yeah, right, and like huh? that's just all they do is just dump food all over themselves mm -hmm. they are not capable of understanding the fact that they're wearing a 500 hundred dollar shirt nope and i was that kid before as well you know when i was a grown i was a grown kid you know yeah but my parents never bought me gucci thank god no no i just meant like in my career and when before i've like went to that shift i was i was like a kid wearing that stuff you know i don't know what the fuck i'm wearing yeah i don't understand the value of someone else's struggle and that i'm fucking spending 20 racks on a chain that looks like it's 50 for no fucking reason. Yeah, that's a fact. Do you, uh, yeah, when you look at, like, your financial decisions back then when you were really, like, balling out of control, making all that money, like, do you, do you think that 
you wish that you had made smarter decisions just so that you could be really chilling now or what? No, because I see a certain fate in front of me and I have certain uh, creations and brands and stuff. And I see a lot of a lot broader, wider future that that I couldn't have uh, what I gained internally. I couldn't I couldn't purchase it and I wouldn't sell it, you know, but where I to be able to like revert in time and retain the same wisdom and knowledge, I would 100 percent not handle the money the same way. You mm. know what I mean? But we're the choice between fucking, you know, just having it and losing whatever or just just uh, being given whatever mind frame it would be in after all this time or like being where I'm at. I'd stay where I'm at, you know. Right. Do and, you, wait, what did you say? And last thing, and in the vein of that also, I fucking love making music so much at this point. I'd rather make 100 grand a year off music than 10 million off skating. You know what right. I mean? Because that's what I'd rather be doing. So I don't give a fuck. And if you tell me I can't eat nothing off it, well, it, clearly at this point I'm not listening. Do you still love skating? Yeah, I love it. When I do it, I try to do it to the best of my ability and do creative stuff. I still, I want to do one more part at least to... Uh, it's the first time too that I've see, I like I see the part in my head and I like have a song picked and I see how it flows before you usually just film and then you pick a song and it goes to it you know sort of figure it out but after, I have yeah. a, this song Claire de Lune Claude Debussy like a classical song I do all this very like call it ledge ballet if you want fucking technical skating very beautiful graceful slow mo stuff you know into this nice dun, 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 dun. that sounds tight yeah. Is there anybody else in skating that you have any issues with at this point? Do you feel like uh, Gary Rogers ever offended you on Skateline? <laughs> no, but he definitely he definitely made his fucking shots. He's taking shots, but yeah. he never got to you? No, when we met in person, too, he was, like, very just, hey, you know, I'm fucking... Yeah, he's the coolest dude. Yeah. yeah. He, he's, he, he, he really, when I interviewed him, he really made a point of letting it be known that he's not a bitch, too. Really? That, that when he talks shit on Skateline, it's because that's how he feels, and if somebody... Got something to say about it? I right, bet. Let's do something. Like you know, he was very. He really wanted to make that clear, and he wanted to make it very clear that he actually does skate, and that he actually is very into like skating. Like he's not a pro, oh, yeah. he's a but fan. he loves it. Yeah, he loves it. He's definitely like him. He I, loves it probably more than a lot of pros do. Yeah, yeah. That's how it happens. If I can get into something, and I'm always, I'm always trying to convince Gary to move out here and do stuff for No Jumper, but he's like, really? nah. He's like, I can't fuck with the rap shit. Oh, that's funny. He's like, they're too crazy. I don't want to be around, around all that shit. <laughs> He's like, no. Nah, I like how you he he tell, he told me before I came at him. I text him, I'm coming to whatever. He's like, all right, it's cool. I just uh, I'm doing an interview with a rapper right now. Yeah. And I said something like that's funny. And he said like a different rapper. Yeah. He's like a different rapper. Like saying like, oh, like I'm not trying to say you're not a rapper. Yeah. But I really didn't take it that way. I took it more honestly. I took it more flattering. Like I transcend hopefully being just a fucking rapper. Or, well, you know I, what I, mean? I just Sometimes. didn't want to say. Like the rapper's name because I figured you probably wouldn't have heard of him. Cause I figured that yeah. much too, which you, you know, not correct. just because he wasn't very well known until he had this whole thing where he sort of faked his own death and everything. Wow, that's impressive. And then people were kind of tripping about it, but he is a good guy and he actually has some dope songs. So. Yeah. Shout but out Project Youngin for Project the record. Youngin, Project but Youngin. Yes, but yeah, you were right. Now you knew that I probably wouldn't. And just it was just funny. My mind analyzed quick, and I was like, that's funny. I noticed that one part of your life that hasn't changed at all is that you're still a fucking fashion icon. You got the the, the overalls with the one strap. Oh yeah, this is my boy. Would love it if he could see this real quick too. This is, he supports dreamers. It's okay. Dreamy, dreamy. Support the dreamers. Yeah, support the dreamers. Got Marcus it. Marcus Dreamy, you probably know him. Tad it up. Support okay. DACA. Yeah, support DACA. Fuck, Who's fuck it? ICE. Fuck, fuck ICE. We're, yeah, we're we're down with the immigrants. If there's anybody out there who's watching this and you're an illegal immigrant, drop a comment down below <laughs> and say I am an illegal immigrant. I said, I said, I yelled ice at these Mexicans the other day by accident, but I was yelling something. We had something like ice fucking, I, literally there was a, there was a thing like ice cooler or whatever. And I was yelling whatever it was. I don't remember ice cold or something that like people out the car window and I just yelled ice and then noticed they were like, you know, maybe that meant something wow. to them. And I stopped. Like, oh my God, That's my friends fucking so crazy. Yeah, that was pretty bad. No, that Migos song. Ice, 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 oh. ice. <laughs> <laughs> just play that driving through. Fucking. That's fucked up. No, nah, we definitely should not be playing that. We can't be playing that in the Mexican neighborhoods right now. It's just too serious right now. Yeah. People are getting taken away from their kids and shit. That shit's fucked up, right? Yeah, it's crazy. I didn't say anything on Twitter or anything, but man, I, I was like just thinking, like, this shit's fucked up. People are really getting stole, taken away from their kids. They're never going to reunite them. Yeah, that's fucked up. Yeah. I'm uh, disappointed in my fact that I let this thing be just, just a little bit to the point where I wanted to hunch the whole time when really I could have just taken it oh, into yeah, my own yeah. hands. 
Yeah, you can just come in here with a set of tools, sort of adjust it to whatever you want. I'm always going back and forth between sitting up or, or sort of slouching down, you know? Slouching's nice. This is not really a slouch chair. No, that chair is more like sitting on like a, like a bubble or like a ball, you know? Yeah. So what, what is it, what's the overall Jeremy uh, Rogers mission statement at this point in terms of what you're trying to do with your life, what you're trying to accomplish? Um, I have a... Fuck sometimes like I battle between say or at least right now I'm doing it between like certain things like saying saying things because some things it's it was premature and I and I say certain things and there's like functionalities and and great things that maybe are like existing now Mm -hmm. and I didn't you know but there's certain things I've been given like functionalities that I want to exist and I I guess one of them you know what I'm gonna maybe it's a safety net if I say it on here because then it's if someone takes it they took it from me I wouldn't mind the pat on the back at very least but this is a functionality that someone is going to take and it's really at the tip of my pyramid of um, contribution that I think I can make to the world you Mm -hmm. know so it is uh, it what it is it was given to me um, some years ago on a single base platform. So an artist each month would give, say like on the 15th of the month, a different artist each month would give one single, dollar minimum, fan can donate as much as they want. Radiohead did an album for $5 minimum, fan could put as much as they want, and 100% proceeds go to the charity of their choosing. So I've, had, I've been had sitting on that thing for a while, and then it was called something different and it shifted and now it's called Humana Beats. Humana is like the voice of the people. This would be just a functionality and I would call it like crisis judo. So literally. So the way it will work now, which is flawless, is a, is a in a streaming based world when something like say Puerto Rico happens, or Vegas or whatever, all different artists, they can turn their song, their streaming rights over for a duration of time. Oh. So they say stream my catalog for this day only, for this week, you know, mm. and 100 percent of proceeds go to these fucking causes and it's kind of a joke that it doesn't already exist and uh really yeah and it's something like you know i know i know uh jimmy ivine and he could bring it to his dad you know people could try to steal it i have a good relationship with rex kudo who did post malone's music i've told him about it and he gets it you know and certain people some people are like oh the labels won't do it's just a it doesn't fuck labels it doesn't matter who who what you know what i mean it's just labels a, can't stop the philanthropy they can't, yeah they can't stop the philanthropy and it's just it's it's simple you know and it's uh that that for me is one thing that if i didn't go through like the struggle time that wouldn't have came, you know? It doesn't really matter if I create it or whoever does. I'd like it, it would be fair. It would be nice to involve me in this thing if you go forward and try to oh, whatever. That's tight. Yo, I'm, I'm going to do a clip from my vlog because I forgot please. I got to get one. Yo. Yada da. I did an interview with Project Youngin before. I forgot to get a clip of him, but now I'm in here with Jeremy Rogers. Yeah, me. Right talking that real shit. We're on live stream shit. too on an alternate channel, which I might have to explain later. But yo, webcam. shout out to Jeremy. We're webcam hosts. How you feeling? You got anything you want, you want to say to this audience? I don't know. Look at my shirt, dude. I didn't even realize what it said, dude. Pounding pussy since forever. <laughs> wow, hustler. That's lit. That was like a Coke shirt. That is cool, man. Pounding pussy. Gang shit. Um, all right, thank you. Um, <laughs> all right, yeah, anything we should uh, talk about? You want to talk about before we uh, get on the road? Anything? Yeah, I don't know, whatever. I feel like I learned a lot, and I'm, I'm glad. I want to know what Nigel thinks, and I want to know if he wants to come in here and respond, or if we want to do some sort of debate. Or if he wants to enter your sort of academic decathlon that you proposed. Yeah, I mean, but that would be, come on, it would be funny, at least in skateboarding, everyone from skating would fucking tune in and watch this fucking triathlon. Oh, that'd be great. It would be funny for me. I mean, to be honest, he brought it to my doorstep, so it's his bad, but I, I can't really lose at this point. It doesn't matter to me. It's just entertainment at this point, you know, and fucking... Yeah. People want to see it, and he wants to fucking do it. Well, we can do it. Yeah. Hey, man, if he wants to do it on here... Let Let's us know. It, yeah, it could be it. fun. Fucking sell fucking whatever. Monetize it as well. Might as well eat. Do you want to bless us with a freestyle before we go? We could. Hundred thousand thirty million. Hundred thousand thirty million. Yeah. Start with that. Yeah, start with that. <laughs> Swag on a pedestal. Watch what the metal do. Send out shots that embed you, edit you, get it do, remove you. Better get a tool. Better get a tool and a brand new pair of track shoes. Or wind up in the trash like a letter label past due, past June. I became a tycoon. Look up, I see a glass roof. Look down, I see my shoes. Take the world by monsoon. I 
you, excuse me, as I rip your hometown booth. Say that I should write sooner, I just might lose, but I keep doing verses behind my eyes as proof. I can do as I choose to. If I choose to, it be not you and you. <laughs> wow. That was actually pretty good. I was actually getting really into that. Oh, really? I was Damn. just thinking about what you were saying, man. That was fucked up. <laughs> you got to me, man. Hey. That's funny. That was fun. I appreciate you coming on, man. Okay, man. I appreciate it. Hey, we got, we got quite We've been a, talking about doing it for a while. We got a net, well, I got to ask you this. You know about Wecking Ball? Dude, you know what's so funny is, yeah, he used to fucking come at me on the internet. And, oh, he did. And try to be like fights and all this stuff. And he just came out here and then he hit, he'd been hitting me up and he wanted to like, get in. He was like, oh, no, rap too. And I'm like, dude, honestly, I take that shit really serious. Like, whatever. But we you can, want me to FaceTime right now? Meet, yeah, go ahead. Okay, let's do it. And, I was, and I was going to put him in the Niger video and then he got all like, oh, I don't know if it's good for my business right now. Right. Because I just want him in the video, like, just for fun, flex. Wecking Ball is this big ass gnarly dude from Skating, which you guys would know actually if you're watching because he just came on here. I mean, he just did, yeah. What's up? Wack! Yo. Wack! We out here, what's going on? <laughs> what up? What's up, dude? A couple of East Coast legends, what's happening? Fuck yeah, dude. Oh, that's chicken what I'm pizza? talking about. Pizza hey. chicken, huh? You already know. What you on? Chicken and rice. Oh, yeah. We, we were yeah, just talking about uh, you and, and Jeremy's uh, relationship here. What do you think of him? <laughs> um, I mean, I don't really know him all that well. He thought I was trying to beat him up the other day, but no, not the other day. But you were in general. But the other day, I just tried to clear the air. I'm like, Weck, if you're trying to beat me up, I'm really not trying to come no, see you right now. I'm not in the mood, dude. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to jump on a track, bro. What the hell? Oh yeah, yeah. Weck and Ball's trying to make moves in the rap game. Just for the record, I know, dude. Yeah, my dude. boy got the studio laced up at home, dude. Dude. Shit is, shit is looking good you guys do that together and we put it on no jumper game over oh yeah you already know we'll see dude we'll be on the cover of thrasher in no time i like wack i take my music i take music of, serious uh, forbes magazine oh that too yeah, yeah that's yeah, yeah. good man nah, we'll be source. on the cover of uh, forbes <laughs> yeah, magazine yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe forbes and thrasher will do a collab like issue for us i'm with that <laughs> i think they might change it up all right yo I'll holla at you, bro. Love you, uh, Wack. Yeah. Bye. Much love. Peace. Yeah, I'm trying to do an episode where he gets on the air with Beeble, too, and they fucking sort of tough it out. Really? That would be funny. Because they really have, have beef, I think. Do they? Wack's been making fun of him real bad. See, he just does that to try to get it, you know. Like so that's why I thought it would be funny to put him in the, in the Niger thing. And, he, and it is working. So I was like, hey, put him in there. Because he, he had his boys, like, threatening me. When we see you, get, better watch your back, loser. And they spelled it with two O's. I'm like, it's fucking one O, loser. loser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. No, I like what Weck does because, like, a lot of people talk shit. But his whole thing is, like, he, he talks shit. But then he also goes in in the gym. So it's yeah. like, if you want, you want a problem with me, all right. Like, at yeah, least I'm like, going to give you a good fight. I'm <laughs> showing up. <laughs> I'm showing up. I will be there at, in the squared circle for for sure. Uh, I thought he'd be funny in the background with his headdress right after. Yeah. It took too long to get it to get it done and it just he got a little just like probably second thought like I don't know that's good for my business right now and that I'm like what are you talking about that is your fucking business you see, you see the interview he did where he had the fucking chain mail on yeah, top of his I head wear that, that shit was hard yeah. yeah I mean if you got in a fight with him and he was wearing that that might offer a lot of protection I would be fucked dude I would fuck your knuckles up dude but it also might help fuck him up too you hit him and he got that thing on does that gonna like it presses fuck? in like a ring yeah you're Maybe? a good thinker see know. you think on both sides of I'm the sword I'm thinking these things out Wecking Ball he's just, he's just going for the gusto mm-hmm <laughs> All right, yo, man, I appreciate All it. Right. I'm looking forward to doing this interview for a while. Thank Bless you, brother. You guys. Make Live sure free, that Chris. Chris. Dreams. Fear of human opinion. Disabled success. Long. Take a picture. Well,